All right, well, here we are again doing our purification together before we go to bed. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's just uh, settle into our meditation uh, position. We'll just settle our minds, bring our mind into the same place as our body. So let's just go through these um, different uh, aspects of how the body should be sitting while we're meditating. And this does come from the lamb rim. So it's set out in the lamb rim. It's not something that everybody made up. So if your feet are on the floor, make sure they're parallel, feet flat on the floor. Otherwise they're cross-legged, comfortable cross-legged position. And if you're able to um, sit in the full Vajra posture with both feet over, both opposite feet over thighs, fantastic. Otherwise just relax. Uh, right hand in the left, thumbs touching. And the hand that's uh, just very gently nestled in your lap. And make sure your arms are not kind of tight up against your ribs. Just sort of give some air there underneath the arms. And coccyx slightly raised. This helps to a length, straighten the spine. So now we can just visualize we have uh, these beautiful pearls of light, the string extending from the, the coccyx, the tip of the coccyx, all the way up through our crown. You can visualize somebody is very gently lengthening, 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 putting some space in between those vertebrae. Just unknotting the day. And you might feel that your muscles, ligaments, just very gently letting go. And don't force it, just notice very subtle stretching, space. Head slightly tip forward, eyes down. And they can be open or closed. If you open them, it's just like a, a crack to allow the light in. And if you do find that you're falling asleep or feeling dull, it's a, a good antidote is to just to open the eyes a crack to let light in. But most of us, it's a little bit too distracting. Relax the jaw. Now we can go to the crown of the head. And this part here about relaxing the skull isn't in the lamb rim. I'm just adding it so we can just relax a little bit more. Let go of some of our tension from the day. So relax the scalp, the forehead, temples, the nose the face, cheeks, sorry. relax the ears, the mouth, the jaw, go to the back of the head and relax the back of the scalp, the neck, the back of the neck, the shoulders, the throat, the chest, Arms, hands, fingers, legs, feet, and toes. And relax your belly. We hold so much tension there. So just let it all go. And then just check that we haven't slumped. We just want to be alert, relaxed, and aware. Our minds sharp. And let's bring the uh, mind to the breath. 
just breathing in and breathing out. And let's just notice the sensation of the air as it flows in, flowing in across the entrance of the nostrils and the sensation of the air flowing out, slightly warmer on the nostrils. I just think I'm going to do this uh, purification practice tonight so I can continue to get rid of all the negative seeds and the negative imprints so they don't ripen as future suffering for myself and for others. So I can eventually reach my own perfection and become a benefit to all sentient beings. So just remember again, there's nothing that we've done so awful that it can't be purified. So maybe just bring something to mind that may have happened today or yesterday, last week. Maybe while we're sort of engaged in this practice during the week, things pop into our mind, memories, things that we've forgotten that maybe we'd like to work on. This really is a very purely a psychological practice we're doing here going to change all the negativity in our mind to positivity. So the first of the four opponent powers, part of this practice is the power of regret. We sincerely, sincerely regret from the depths of our heart. Anything we've done to harm any living being on this day, this life in our past lives. You can think of Again, specific actions of the body, your speech. And then generally you can regret everything you've done that's harmed others, that's negative, harmed ourselves. This is based on the logic of karma. This idea that everything we are experiencing our comfortable lives, our home, the pleasant and unpleasant things that happen to us. They say there is nothing that we're experiencing that we didn't create the karma for. So we don't want to experience the suffering of our past negative actions. So we'd like to purify. So we want to regret what we've done. We don't want these karmic seeds to ripen as our future suffering. And as I've said before, Lama Zokram says this sincere regret goes a long way towards purification. So regret the anger and attachment Regret our broken vows, bodhisattva vows, tantric vows, pratamoksha vows. So if we have these, it's good every now and then to just have a look at what they actually are. Because I think, I'm sure we don't all remember all the time. All the first, the secondary vows and the primary vows and the this and the that. So it's good to every now and then look at them to see what we're actually doing. So the next one is the power of reliance, the next four, the opponent power. And this is, this is a, we call this refuge. So we're turning to Buddha Vajrasattva, the doctor. He has the methods we can use to purify all these negative seeds. He has the medicine. So we're not asking for Vajrasattva's forgiveness. We want to use his methods. So here we visualize 
Guru Vajrasattva on the, above the crown of our head, about two inches above the crown of our head. So you can imagine this is the mind of your Lama, your teacher, Guru, mentor. And he's in this aspect of Vajrasattva and he or she made of radiant, blissful white light. Vajrasattva is sitting with the cross-legged in the full Vajra position on a lotus. His face is radiant and beautiful. He has these lotus-like eyes, very peaceful, full of love and compassion, completely non-judgmental, accepting us for who we are. His mouth is a red, sweet red mouth. His hair is black and held up in a top knot. His arms are crossed at his heart, the left underneath the right. The left is holding a bell representing wisdom. The right is holding a vajra which represents the indestructibility of compassion. They're being crossed, represents the union of the two, symbolizing enlightenment itself the development of infinite wisdom and infinite compassion. To the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, I go for refuge until I'm enlightened. By this practice of meditating on Guru Vajrasattva, may I reach Buddhahood so as to benefit all sentient beings. So here we, are, we think about developing compassion. So in order to do this, we need to rely upon other sentient beings. So in this case, we will rely on the beings that we have harmed and who have harmed us by developing compassion for them. So think of somebody that you may have harmed, maybe, maybe a sentient being, not necessarily human, that you've harmed recently and in the past, and then in general, all beings we have ever harmed since the beginning of time. And then remember those who have harmed us. And it may have been even as recent as an hour ago. And just feel compassion for them because knowing that wish to harm us comes from a very unhappy mind and they will suffer in the future. And they're not as fortunate as we are to be able to come and do this practice, to even know about this practice, to even know that this is something we could actually do. So we must purify for their sake. So now we get to the third opponent power, the power of the remedy. So this is the actual medicine, the doing of the, this is where we actually do the purification. Okay, so the first one is a purification of the body. So we visualize Guru Vajrasattva very compassionately sending powerful white uh, nectar from his heart, enters us into our, through our crown and pours into our entire body, filling us completely. So it's pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, filling us with this blissful radiant white light. And uh, it forces out of the lower orifices all the harm we have ever done to any living being with our body in the form of inky liquid pouring out of us and disappearing into space, not one atom left. So we recite the mantra as we visualize this. So we're, in this case, this uh, negativities of our body, uh, killing, stealing. And one, one of the ways that Lama from Shay sort of defines stealing is taking the ungiven. And sexual misconduct. And one of the ways that that is defined is sleeping around behind your partner's back. Causes a lot of um, distress. So this is this one. So we recite the mantra as we do the visualization with this. 
Om Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Padita Dita Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasidi Mepiyata Sawakama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Karuhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawatata Gata Vajramami Mutta Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe Om Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Padita Dida Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasidi Mepiyata Sawakama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuruhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawatata Gata Vajramami Mutta Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe Om Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Padita Dina Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasidi Mepiyata Sawakama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuruhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawatata Gata Vajramami Mutta Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe And now I just feel completely delighted that all the harm that we've ever done to any sentient being with our body is completely purified. I think that there is no way we could possibly do anything other than benefit others now with our body. So the next one is the purification of the speech. So we visualize Guru Bhadrasattva very happily sending this powerful nectar again from his heart chakra. It arcs around and pours into us through the, our, own, our crown and fills us completely. So this time, it forces up um, from the bottom up to the top of our body all the negativities of our speech. And so all these negativities are sort of overflowing and disappearing into space, not one atom left. So as Lamia Yeshi says, it's like when you turn on a, a tap in the sink and fill a dirty glass, all the junk comes to the top. So we just visualize this. So these negativities of the speech lying. So the, one of the problems with lying is that it is very, very confusing for people. It also, when we lie, we create the cause to be lied to, which confuses us. It's also kind of annoying. And there's talking about uh, people behind their back. Harsh speech. And just rapiding on about nothing. Wasting time. So we just uh, think of uh, anything that we may have done to harm someone with our speech and then purifying it with this visualization as we recite the mantra. Om Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Patita Dira Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasiri Mebiyata Sawakama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Karuhum Ha Ha Ho Bhagawan Sawatata Gata Vajramami Mutsa Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe Om Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Padita Dira Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasiri Mebiyata Sawakama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Karuhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajramami Mutsa Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe Om Vajrasapha Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapha Dina Padita Dira Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasiri Mebiyata Sawakama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Karuhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajramami Mutsa Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe so now just feel delighted and relieved that all our speech is completely purified and imagine that all we are able to do now is be of benefit to others with our speech. Just imagine everyone that hears any words that are uttered, any words that fall out of our mouth can only benefit from hearing us. How amazing that would be. So then a purification of the mind 
So Guru Vajrasattva very compassionately again sends blissful, radiant white light from his heart that enters us through our crown, brilliant, radiant light, filling us completely. And the moment it hits our heart, all the uh, delusions, negative is on the mind, completely dispelled. So just imagine all the, the darkness of the negativity of our mind, all the attachment, the neediness, anger and violence and depression, disappointment and jealousy. All these kind of emotions that are so sharp and uncomfortable. All the bitterness, all instantly dispelled, not one atom left. So we recite the mantra as we visualize this. Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasafa Dima Patita Dira Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Mepiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuruhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajramami Mutsa Vajrabawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasafa Dina Patita Dira Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Mepiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuruhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajramami Mutsa Vajrabawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasafa Dina Patita Dida Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Mepiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuruhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajramami Mutsa Vajrabawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe Now again we be completely delighted that all our delusions which the source of our own suffering and why we are mothers, completely purified. And then think there's no space in our heart for anything other than love and kindness and forgiveness, wisdom and bliss and compassion. So now this last one, we're purifying all the imprints of all the negativity of our body, speech and mind. So this time we try again. If it's too complicated and busy, just visualize white light. What they suggest is to visualize all the three previous visualizations of the body, speech and mind at the same time. So that's the light coming down, the light coming, uh, the, sorry, the nectar coming down, the nectar flowing in and um, negative is the speech flowing out of the top of the head and then the light dispelling all the negativities of the mind. So we just visualize as we recite this mantra, the imprints of the negativities of our body, speech and mind completely dispelled. Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasafa Dina Patita Dira Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Mimpiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuruhum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajramami Mutta Vajrabawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasafa Dina Patita Dida Mebawa, Sutokaya Mebawa, Supokaya Mebawa, Anarakta Mebawa, Sawa Siddhi Mepiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me, Sitam Shriam Kuruhum, Ha 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 Ho, Bhagawan, Sawa Tata Gata Vajramami Mutta Vajrabawa, Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe, Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya, Vajrasafa Dina Patita, Dida Mebawa, Sutokaya Mebawa, Supokaya Mebawa, Anarakta Mebawa, Sawa Siddhi Mepiyata Sawa Kama Sutta Me, Sitam Shriam Kuruhum, Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan, Sawa Tata Gata Vajramami Mutta Vajrabawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahom Pe. So now feel that you, we are completely purified, not one atom of negativity left in our mind stream. Just imagine all the, even the very, very subtlest obscurations to omniscience 
have been removed. So now this is the fourth opponent power, the fourth step in this practice. So a very important one is a determination not to harm with our body and with our speech and with our mind. Again. Well, it's probably never going to be again. But we really need to make a determination to try and turn our mind towards a different way of being so we don't keep falling into the same habitual patterns over and over again. And this is concludes anger towards ourselves. So a lot of us have this habit of, oh, you're so stupid, or that wasn't good enough. So we need to stop all that, it's really nonsense. It's one thing to be humble, there's another thing to be rubbishing yourself all the time. So we make a determination not to harm again. It's like a beacon. We have to keep reminding ourselves, guiding us, guiding our body, our speech and our mind in new and different directions. So again, just remember, as Lama Zaprimpache says, everything exists on the tip of a wish. So if we can't, and it's probably realistic that we can't commit to never do these old habits of ours again, and we can just give us something, so a realistic timeline something that we know that we can keep to. And give ourselves a pat on the back when we've actually achieved it. And if we didn't quite make the timeline that we'd set for ourselves the day before, just bring it back a bit and do what's achievable. And then even rejoice at just even remembering that that's what we said we would do. So I really like this one of committing not to doing something while we're sleeping because we'll be sleeping. We won't be gossiping, we won't be harming. So that's always quite a helpful one. Then we make a general vow to make an effort to avoid these other things that we do that are negative. So this determination gives us the strength to change. So now just imagine Guru Vajrasattva is completely delighted with us and wants to merge with our mind, melts into white light and dissolves into us through our crown. So we think my Guru's body, speech and mind, Vajrasattva's body, speech and mind, my own body, speech, and mind are the same thing. So next, as Lama Zaprimshe recommends, meditate on the emptiness of the three circles. In emptiness, there is no I, the creator of negative karma. There is no action of creating negative karma. And there is no negative karma created. So however we understand emptiness, we just place our mind there. It's this idea that it's good to start thinking of all phenomena as empty, that they don't exist from their own side. It's not fixed, permanent. Things do not, things do not exist the way they appear to us, the way we think they do. So now we finally dedicate all the positive energy that we've created today to all living beings. Maybe somebody you know who's sick or suffering has passed away. Dedicate for them, for ourselves, for our own 
future enlightenment so we can be a benefit to others. We just finish with these our immeasurable thoughts and our dedication prayers, immeasurable equanimity. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were to abide in equanimity, free from the closeness of attachment and the distance of hatred. May they abide in equanimity. I myself will cause them to abide in equanimity. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. Uh, measurable loving kindness. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were to achieve Buddhahood. May they achieve Buddhahood. I myself will cause them to achieve Buddhahood. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. Mm, immeasurable compassion. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they be free from suffering and its causes. I myself will cause them to be free from suffering and its causes. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this immeasurable joyfulness. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were never separated from the happiness of higher rebirth and liberation. May they never be separated from these. I myself will cause them never to be separated from these. Please Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. Then just one, let's just do one verse of his dedication prayers. As a result of the three times merits of myself and others, may Bodhicitta from which the happiness of all sentient beings comes, be generated the minds of self and other sentient beings without delay, even for one second, and that which has been generated, may it increase. And for His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, to the incomparably kind Tenzin Gyatso, I beseech, may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. You who uphold the subduer's moral way, who serves as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Manjana's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplish magnificent prayers, honoring the three jewels, savor of myself and others, your disciples. Please, please live long. And then, uh, Venerable One, to you whose kindness exceeds that of all the conquerors, for those wanderers in far off places, especially the West mindful of your loving concern for us and intentionally descending again into a family of a far distant land, we make this request, O Lama, please, please live long. Okay, everyone. Now we're completely washed clean. <laughs> we can go to bed with a happy mind and relax. <laughs> we're pure. We're purified for another day. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. So lovely always to see you all. Our little Vajrasattva group. Okay. <laughs>